Okay, so today very interesting question was asked by Dr. Chandra in the ICU that when we should give bicarb in diabetic ketoacidosis. So I thought of making a short video on this. So today we'll see two references. One is from UpToDate, which compiles all the studies, what the majority of the authors are saying or of their opinion, and what the majority of the physicians are doing. Second is from the textbook of intensive care medicine by Irvin Rippey, which is standard text. And let's see what they say. So this is the first one from up to date the bicarbonate and metabolic acidosis and when you should give so there are only two indications one is when the patient with an arterial ph of 6.7 why uh, this is recommended because if the ph is 6.9 uh, less than 6.9 it decreases the cardiac contractility and vasodil and cause vasodilatation which will impair the tissue perfusion so any cause which cause the ph to drop below 7 and 6.9 it will have a negative impact on the cardiac contractility and it will vasodilate and the, the patient will land in hypotension both because of uh, vasodilation and decreased cardiac contractility to maintain the ph so so to maintaining the ph above 7 is the target in such condition you should give second is if the patient is having life threatening hyperkalemia means your potassium is very high in uh, DK usually a hypokalemic state but if if uh, there is hyperkalemia to counteract that you should give um, uh, bicarbonates now let's see what the second text is saying this is from Irwin Rippey and there is a very interesting line it is written is neutralizing is intuitively appealing means you feel to you are prompted or it feels that you should give bicarbonate Neutralization is intuitively appealing, but fluid and electrolyte placement alone with emulate the acidosis. So that's the key. In diabetic acidosis, the ketone formation is causing the uh, metabolic acidosis and by giving lots of fluids and supplementation of electrolytes and insulin will settle the ketoacidosis, not the bicarbonate. Plus, what they are saying, bicarbonate therapy may produce adverse effects. So what are they? It can cause hypokalemia, severe, hyper, severe acute hypokalemia. It can also cause paradoxical CSF acidosis. A shift in the oxygen dissociation curve to the left means if, if the acidosis gets corrected too fast, the hemoglobin will not release oxygen to the tissues. So it will cause hypoperfusion to the tissues and which will cause increased lactic acidosis. And there is a increased hepatic ketogenesis also. So bicarbonate therapy should not be given just to neutralize the bicarbs uh, or just to make uh, maintain the pH somewhere around 7.3 to 7.4. So in children, this is more uh, worrisome because bicarbonate therapy may increase the risk of cerebral edema. So when it should use by this text? So bicarbonate replacement during decay should you be used only when there is a hypotensive shock which is unresponsive to rapid fluid replacement means the patient is hypo uh, hypotensive you give given lots of fluids but because of the severe metabolic acidosis and decreased ph your patient is hypotensive then you should replace buffering capability is completely exhausted means your bicarbs per se are very low uh, we usually have a target somewhere around six to eight uh, if the bicarbs are somewhere around 6 to 8, we usually supplement. But beyond that, we don't supplement bicarb in DK per se. So if buffering capacity is, is exhausted, respiratory responses are maximal means patient is so much tachypneic that you are feeling that he's been tachypneic for very long and now he can get fatigue and, and now the PCO2 will rise or this patient will crash. Or acidemia is worsening in spite of all, all the therapies you are giving or you have an advanced pre-existing renal dysfunction in which certain bicarb replacement needs to be given so both so the conclusion is you should give bicarb in dk only when your ph is severely acidotic it's, it's below 6.9 and you should target to maintain the ph somewhere around 7 above 7 with bicarb and the rest the fluid electrolytes and uh, insulin will take care secondly if, it, if the patient is having refractory hyperkalemia or severe hyperkalemia which is causing the derangement if the patient is in shock or there is a severe respiratory fatigue uh, due to hyperventilation patient is having or the patient is pre-existing have renal failure where you need to give a little bit of 
bicarb so these are the indication for which you should keep bicarb in specifically diabetic ketoacidosis because the acidosis in dk patient usually tolerate well and the definitive therapy is giving um, uh, fluids electrolytes and insulin how you should give they say that maximum they, you should give 100 milliequivalent in fluid over a period of 2 hours obviously you need to supplement potassium and the back also they have re recommended that 100 milliequivalent should be given in 400 over 2 hours so that's the way even if you need to give don't replace it too fast so that's all for today do read more about it i am again repeating bicarbonate in diabetic ketoacidosis this video was all about that because bicarbonate therapy may worsen the ketoacidosis or have severe side effects in, in this particular condition this rule doesn't apply to any other conditions other causes of metabolic acidosis it's specifically for dk so thank you dr chandras for asking this question do read more about it those who are watching thank you